If starting a new long-term project from scratch seems like a daunting task, imagine what it's like for a CX program. Really the very first thing was to come in and educate. Educate the leadership on what is customer experience? How is it different from customer service? Looking at what are the key components that make a customer experience program be successful? Building a customer experience initiative from the ground up on this episode of the CX Leader Podcast. The CX Leader Podcast with Steve Walker is produced by Walker, a business consulting firm that helps our clients unlock the potential of their customer experiences by placing the customer at the heart of all their business decisions. You can find out more at walkerinfo.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Walker, the host of the CX Leader Podcast, and thank you for listening. On the CX Leader Podcast, we explore topics and themes to help leaders like you leverage all the benefits of your customer experience and help your customers and prospects want to do more business with you. We've been taking the time in our last few episodes to review some best practices in the CX field with some amazing guest practitioners who helped us unpack how they put those tips and tricks to work. However, many of those examples were within the context of a CX initiative that was already up and running. What if you don't have a customer experience program or you're brand new to the process? How do you get your CX program working from the ground up? Well, our guest on this episode has a particular talent in that area. Roberta O'Keefe is the customer experience leader at Murphy Hoffman Company, a full-service truck dealership operating in 16 states with over 100 dealerships. Roberta, thanks for being on the CX Leader Podcast. Thanks, Steve. I'm really excited to be here. Well, I've never met you uh, in person, but certainly know about you and your company through the industry and appreciate uh, you being on the podcast. Maybe for the benefit of our uh, listeners, could you just tell us a little bit about your your own personal background and how long you've been at Murphy Hoffman and how you got into the CX space? Sure. I've been in the customer experience space for most of my career. I actually started off uh, back in high school doing phone surveys for a local auto dealership for the Toyota Corporation. So calling customers and asking how their service was done uh, was my first taste of market research. And so my career grew in the marketing and sales business development area and ended up in working for GE Consumer Finance in the Chicago area and moved then to Kansas City about 12 years ago and worked for GE Power and Water, where we started and grew a voice of customer program within the power industry for that particular business unit. So been with Murphy Hoffman for the last seven months. And so fairly new to the company, and the company is new to learning more about what customer experience is. So this role was brand new for them. And so this was a great opportunity to start something from scratch and basically start with a piece of paper and figure out what does customer experience really mean for the Murphy Hoffman Group. So a couple of things you said are pretty intriguing. You're, you're one of the first CX pros I've ever met that actually came up to be a CX pro. Most of them kind of got there by accident. So you're actually a kind of a part of a new generation here of people that actually started out and have had their whole career there. And then what's really interesting, I assume you were recruited to Murphy Hoffman to build this program, right? Yes, I was. So, and and was that their intent? Was that exactly what they were out looking for? Or did you sell them on the idea? How'd that occur? Yep. So they actually had a job posting and um, were looking for someone that had the expertise that could come in and kind of formulate what this program might look like for them. They had an idea, they had a job description, but um, they didn't really quite know exactly how to execute on that. And so they needed someone to kind of come in and really have that experience of operations, marketing, sales, um, developing voice of customer programs, um, thinking outside the box, and really building it from scratch. They had no context to go from other than knowing that their industry, um, they are number one in the industry of truck sales. And so they wanted to a way to continue to remain number one. And they know that in order to do that is to improve the way they service their customers. And they know that's kind of where things are going with 
price competition and product, you know, they're all the same down the road and you can only decrease price so much before it really starts hitting, you know, your, your operational um, goals. So we really needed to focus on developing a better way to service customers and build that loyalty and repeat uh, business. So Murphy Hoffman, it's not a household name for everyone, but it is like the big truck dealer. Like you think about Penske being the big auto dealer across the country, for example. Is that helpful for our listeners to think about? Yes, we go by the brand MHC. MHC. And their locations are throughout the Midwest and the Southeast. And they are the largest Kenworth Kenworth. semi-truck dealership group in the nation. Yes. So think of us as a large auto dealership, but for the semi-truck industry and particularly the Kenworth brand. And you'd be selling to fleets and to owner operators and the big companies that have their own fleets as well as the... Correct. Okay. So uh, starting one of these things from scratch with a company that's never done it before, is that uh, scary, exhilarating, or, or a little bit of both? (laughs) I would say a little bit of both. Um, I came into the role very excited and I thrive on the unknown. So I really enjoy coming in and creating something from scratch. So this role wasn't too scary. Um, You've done it before though, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's been positions I've had in the past that were brand new to the business and trying to create that, but also creating a brand new voice of customer program or rebuilding voice of customer programs um, I've, I've done in the past. Yeah. And I, I would just share from kind of from our side of the business, a lot of times I'd rather start from scratch, especially if you have all the, the right pieces, which we're going to talk about here, yep. than uh, try to retrofit a legacy system. So how'd you get started? What did you decide to focus on first? So the program, um, again, hadn't been defined yet. So really the very first thing was to come in and educate, educate the leadership on what is customer experience? How is it different from customer service? Because those terms are thrown around quite a bit. And it was really a matter of sharing with them kind of thoughts and best practices that are out and outside industries and looking at what are the key components that make a customer experience program be successful. So the first three to six months is really focusing on educating the leadership team, getting the message out to the masses, because we've got quite a few branches throughout the U.S., over 100. How many total employees across the company? We have over 4,000 employees. It's a massive communication effort. Yeah. So really focusing on that whole socializing the idea of what customer experience is and what how we define it for our customers and for our employees. And so coming up with that definition and an understanding how it ties back to our mission statement is critical so that everyone in the company understands the why. Why are we doing this? Why is Roberta here? So that was very important to establish up front. And you mentioned educating and engaging your senior leadership, but it sounds like the fact that they threw this out and then recruited you, that you had good top-down support. Yes. You know, but as you come into an organization, they don't know what they don't know. So there, there is always that component of change management that's uh, sometimes difficult to deal with. But, you know, the management team overall is very supportive in this position, where we're going and what we're trying to do and accomplish for our customers. So you, you said earlier that, you know, they that the leadership decided this is the way that they would try to differentiate themselves because they were already kind of a leader. And, you know, if you look at it by scope and scale, can you talk a little bit more about that sort of strategically, how they were thinking about that and, you know, what they were trying to accomplish? Sure. So in the trucking industry, it's very cyclical. And so right now we're, we're doing really well. You know, truck sales are, are doing well. Companies are buying trucks for their fleets. Um, so sales is doing very well. But we know that this is a cyclical business. So as that starts to taper down, where do we need to focus on revenue is, you know, servicing our customers, having customers come in and have their preventative maintenance is done on their trucks, having, um, you know, the service and parts availability for them when they need them. And so we know that from past history of the cycle of the business, that 
parts and service is going to be a need to ensure we're still number one in providing that service and parts for our customers. So in order to do that, we need to look at how, do, how are we servicing our customers? How good or bad are we at servicing our customers? And so that's what prompted them to really bring somebody in and take a look at, you know, how are we getting customer feedback? How are we measuring their satisfaction? And right now, um, you know, quite a few auto dealerships and trucking dealerships use Google reviews as one of their main metrics to look at because that's where their customers are looking at. The drivers, when they're looking for a local place to have service done on a truck, they're going to look on Google and search for the closest Kenworth dealership in their area. And what will pop up would be our dealership. And so looking at ratings and, and that were very important to incorporate into our uh, feedback management program. Yeah. So that would be what we'd kind of call some unsolicited types of information. Yeah. So you've been at it for going on seven months. Where are you in your journey and, and uh, what have you already accomplished and, and what's planning for 2020 look like? Yep. So we've done quite a bit of uh, roadshow educational trainings throughout some of our main branches on what customer experience is and, and sharing them our vision and strategy. We've also accomplished a few journey mapping exercises with a couple of our large branches as well to help get the employees engaged in understanding what a customer journey is and what that might look like for our customers. And we are moving forward with looking at voice of customer platforms in order to capture customer feedback in various omni-channel ways. And uh, we are also engaging in an employee internal survey to identify what the engagement is for our employees. Uh, so, but you, you haven't really started to collect quantitative data yet? Uh, we have some. Some but legacy? But we certainly can, yeah, we certainly can expand that and improve that, yes. So, this is one of my sayings especially when the kind of new to the customer experience problem, but obviously this is a successful company. So there has to be a lot of innate customer savvy within the organization. Did you find that? Yeah, we have quite a bit of data that is available for us to use to really put together what that view of the customer looks like. But what we were lacking was just feedback direct from the customer um, to give us a true sense of how they think and feel and what their emotions are when going through um, their journey with us. And so one thing within our organization that we incorporated was a, a uh, internal branding campaign around putting yourself in the driver's seat. So to get our employees really thinking more about how are our customers feeling and thinking when they walk in that door how frustrated are they when their truck is broken down on the street, you know, and they've had to get a tow truck driver to bring it into their shop, or if there's a part that's not available for them, rather than um, disregarding or not really showing empathy, we really are trying to drive that home to the frontline employees around really putting yourself out there and understanding how they're thinking and feeling so we can provide that excellent service in a consistent way. My guest on the uh, podcast this week is Roberta O'Keefe. She is the customer experience leader at Murphy Hoffman Company, also known as MHC. Murphy Hoffman Company is the largest truck dealership in North America. And uh, we're having a fascinating discussion because Roberta has actually started up a program at this company basically from scratch. She's about seven months into it. It sounds like this industry is somewhat uh, immature, I guess, in terms of how they are looking at customer experience. Uh, I know you have a lot of other background, and you actually said you started in the car industry, which I would think that the car industry is very mature. Is that true? So the car industry, I've worked for uh, a couple of various organizations around that, and over the last five years, they've gotten definitely very good at their experience for their consumers when they come in. Um, they've evolved quite a bit over the last five years. I would say this industry is probably a good three to four years behind. And do you think that's just a function of being more business to business kind of fleet driven as opposed to consumer? 
Absolutely. I do think that, um, you know, it's just like any heavy industrial or manufacturing type of organization that has a B2B customer base. Um, you know, this is one of those industries that's just a little bit behind, um, but it's moving forward. You know, there are brands out there like the auto brands and the semi-truck brands like Kenworth that are looking to get more customer feedback so they can help drive uh, better improvements within their service. And so, you know, we're getting there. And Murphy Hoffman is just one of those truck dealership groups that has taken the initiative to bring on someone that can really help them take them to that next level of customer service. How would you describe the culture there? Is it a little more operational or as opposed to customer focused historically? I would say our culture is very operational and metrics driven. We do have a strong culture around continuous improvement and safety. And so leveraging continuous improvement practices has helped this company move forward in driving uh, process improvements, driving improved customer service, improving the way we think and look at uh, how we approach safety, even in our dealership branches. Yeah, that's a great example. And, you know, not to date myself, but being around this business for a long time, you know, some of these things, they do cycle through. So, you know, an impact on continuous improvement, total quality management, lean principles, safety is a great one because, you know, everybody can get behind that, just like I think most logical people can get behind uh, doing right by the customer. You mentioned your auto experience, so the, and, and then you've talked about sort of the more um, industrial aspect of, of a truck dealer. Are there any other models that you've been looking at as you've conceived this program from, from scratch? Sure. There's a couple of uh, great best practices out there, like a Chick-fil-A or a Quick Trip. And the reason why we look at those two as one of the best practices out there for customer experience is how easy they make it to do business with them, how fast and efficient they service their customers. And so taking those elements and looking at how can we become um, faster, easier to do business with, uh, without substituting quality, but in a consistent manner. Because each of those brands that I just mentioned, you have a very um, consistent experience. You walk into a Chick-fil-A and you expect that it might take a little longer to get your food, but you're going to, it's worth it. You're going to stand in line. You know, they're efficient. They're going to greet you at the door. Um, Same with a quick trip experience here in the uh, Midwest, going into that gas station, you know, it's going to be quick and easy to get through that line and you're greeted as soon as you're walking in the door and you know where to find the items that you're needing because they're laid out in the same way. So if we can apply those similar principles at our branches, so that there's a consistent look and feel for our drivers when they come in the door and they know where to go, they know who to talk to, they know what to expect when it's a a particular service that may take one hour to three hours, that our lounges might look the same, that they have the same amenities at each of our locations. So some of those principles we're trying to incorporate across our business. I think you did a great job of kind of throwing out the vision there for how you're going to apply this at a kind of a more old economy type of business. But what's the time frame or what's the the, the vision from you and your leadership about how long this, this initial phase takes? Sure. So the initial phase, we do have a one to two to three year plan. And, you know, as you know, with trying to change culture, um, it takes it takes anywhere between two to three years to see any real evidence of change when you're implementing a program like this. Because there's quite a bit we're doing. Um, Just implementing a voice of customer program can take up to 18 months. So, um, you know, we're, we're slowly getting there again. If we can get our employees engaged in understanding this and really looking at putting themselves in their customer's shoes or in their driver's seat, as we say, we can really help them um, help the experience when customers walk in the door. Highly engaged employees equal better customer service, and that's what I've been pushing in our organization. Roberta, you've done a, an awesome job of describing uh, how you might uh, go about starting up a whole program from scratch. What are, what are your, what's your take-home value for our listeners? What are, the, what are the really the key elements that you've learned through this experience that could be helpful to others in the profession? I think the very first thing you need to do is to ensure that your leadership team and those that report to them are all on the same page, that they all understand and know what customer experience is for your organization. Define it. 
really know uh, what it looks like, smells like, feels like for your organization and get it on paper and socialize it throughout your organization. The second thing is go out to your business, observe, do some uh, meet and greets with various customers and understand what your business does so you can really get a sense of what your customers are going through. And then lastly, establish some standards and introduce new concepts like journey mapping, like voice of customer programs and voice of employee programs and start pushing, pushing the envelope if they're not quite open to it, but can just keep at it, be consistent, be persistent, and uh, have faith that in the long run, it will come together. That's great. Thank you very much, Roberta, for being a guest on the podcast. One of the things we do on the podcast is we try to expand the community. So if uh, people, listeners out there wanted to connect with you, I assume you're on LinkedIn? Yep. Okay, so they can find you. That's Roberta O'Keefe, K-E-I-T-H, at Murphy Hoffman Company. Roberta, thanks a lot for being on the podcast. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. And if you want to talk about anything you heard on the episode or about how Walker can help you in your business customer experience, you can contact me at steve.walker at walkerinformation.com or call me here in the U.S. at uh, plus one three one seven eight four three eight eight nine zero. Don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the CX Leader Podcast. You can go to walkerinfo.com slash podcasts and you'll find links to iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and we're even on our own YouTube channel as well. Simply go to walkerinfo.tv to listen. Thank you for listening to the CX Leader Podcast, which is a production of Walker. We're a business consulting firm that can help you make customer experience your biggest competitive advantage. And in case you haven't heard, we're also the 2019 Qualtrics CX Partner of the Year. Find out more at walkerinfo.com. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and we will see you again next time.